The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of the Noodle Mix Network over at noodle.mx and is sponsored by me and my company, D. Joseph Design from djosephdesign.com. Check out my portfolio and see the kind of stuff I've done for others and that you can hire me to do for you. Stuff like cover art for your podcast, make it look really nice in the iTunes store, make it stand out from all of the other podcasts. I can set up WordPress for you and get you all ready to post your episodes online. I can custom design a website for you so it looks absolutely amazing. Or I could customize my subscribe and follow widget that you see on noodle.mx. I can do that for you. You have a message that deserves to look great. So make your next message look or sound great by hiring me to design it for you. Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 18. The new feed burner, Facebook RSS graffiti, GarageBand 11, and more. Welcome back to another episode of the Audacity to Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Lewis, in some circles, also known as The Ramen Noodle. I've told you about my comedy podcast before. That's where that name comes from, The Ramen Noodle. And that's also my account on Twitter, is twitter.com slash The Ramen Noodle. This is the podcast that you've come to listen to, where I share, where I give you the guts, and teach you the tools to podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. That's the pod of podcasting, the P-O-D. And I hope you have each of those, or you're working on getting each of those, as you prepare to podcast, or you are podcasting right now. Some cool stuff has happened recently in the world of podcasting, and some news, and some cool things coming out. And the first thing, I just want to jump right into this. We're talking about podcasting and a little bit about Audacity today, but I want to jump right into this and tell you some of the cool things that are available and have come out recently. First of all, all of you know about GarageBand, probably. All of you know about GarageBand. And yes, here at the Noodle Mix Studio, we use, or I use, Audacity. It's my software of choice. GarageBand is Apple's audio editor, primarily made for musicians. Now, that's very important for you to remember because of what I'll share in a moment. GarageBand comes in iLife, which is for Mac only, and the latest operating systems on the Mac platform. So not many of you have it, and I know I have more Windows subscribers than Mac subscribers, but some of you may be wondering because you see demonstrations of GarageBand and maybe you've seen the recent demos. Here's the thing that disappointed me a little bit with the latest keynote from Apple in which they announced during their Back to Mac event. I tend to get a little snarky at those events if you can't tell. If you follow my Twitter accounts, then you'll know that I tend to make fun of Apple a lot when they are ever speaking. Well, during their recent event, they premiered iLife 11. And in the iLife suite of apps is a program called GarageBand. GarageBand has a lot of nice tools for podcasters. However, it is made primarily for musicians. And you can instantly see that when you load it up or when you look through all of the tools, you'll start to see that's very musician focused. It's in the name Garage Band for those bands that start out in the garage, those little independent bands. Well, Garage Band does have some podcasting features that are handy. Yeah, they're they're handy. I don't like that it's not as powerful as Audacity. Garage Band is very friendly to use. It's very simple, but it's not as powerful as Audacity. And in some ways, I think it's it's too simple in that there are a lot of things you can't do with it or that it tries to do automatically for you. They've since adjusted some of that. Well, this latest edition version that's come out, GarageBand 11, within the keynote presentation that Steve Jobs gave and the others with them from Apple, of all of the features for GarageBand 11, 
none of them have anything to do with podcasting. They are all musician focused. All of them, all of the features, at least the published features, that is. Looking at the website, this is apple.com slash iLife slash garage band. The show, the link will be in the show notes at the audacity to podcast.com slash 18. In there, it says, what's new in GarageBand? It has flex time, which it says, keep your songs in rhythm with this quick timing fix. Groove matching, instantly match the rhythm of your whole band to a single track. Guitar amps and effects, recreate the sound of legendary guitar rigs and pedals. How did I play? Put your skills to the test while you're jamming on a lesson. And new basic lessons. Learn to play piano and guitar even better on your Mac. Nothing there at all about podcasting. Now, they may have some little hidden features here and there, or little improvements. No doubt with every version, there are some little improvements that may improve the interface for podcasters. But this update is definitely for musicians only. And as I actually even said in my blog a post about it over at the audacity to podcast.com, I just blogged about it briefly on that day. I haven't tried it yet. So that's my disclaimer. I haven't tried it yet, but it just doesn't seem worth trying because it doesn't seem like there's anything new. And as I said in the blog and in my tweets about it, it really seems like Apple has decided to forget about podcasters with this update. There is nothing detectably new within GarageBand 11 from GarageBand 09 that is of any benefit to podcasters. Now, I could be wrong with that. And if you have already upgraded to iLife 11 and you've got or you had iLife 09 to compare it to, please let me know. If there are any special interface changes or anything like that, that make it easier for podcasters, because that's what we're about here on the Audacity to podcast. But I wouldn't hold my breath for it. So that's not too impressive. But if you want to see the quick link to GarageBand 11, then check out the link on the show notes at the audacity to podcast.com slash 18. Now, something else has come out today. This just came out today, and this this is bigger, I think, than GarageBand, bigger than Apple's announcements, and that is FeedBurner has a serious makeover. In fact, I may be the first podcaster talking about this because it came out just today, and today on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time is when I record the Audacity podcast. Just today, Google announced and launched an updated version of FeedBurner. Now, FeedBurner, if you remember it, it's uh, pretty ugly. To look at FeedBurner is to look at something very boring. The way FeedBurner is, to most people when you look at it, is it's just a list of your separate RSS feeds and an option to burn a new feed. And if you want to get into a feed, then you have to click over into every feed and switch back and forth between feeds through lots of clicks and there's no overview of it well the new feed burner is much much nicer the new feed burner is designed a lot more like google analytics in fact, when you first log in, it looks like Google Analytics, just some different color schemes and slightly different layout, but it looks like they're trying to integrate things more with Google Analytics. If you haven't used or aren't using Google Analytics for your uh, for your stats, then you are really missing out because Google Analytics is absolutely wonderful in how it works. But FeedBurner's new options primary on the list is that feed burner is no longer delayed by a day have you ever noticed that when you want to look at feed burner you always have to check it the day after what you're looking for that's why i always look forward to checking my feeds 
on on Wednesday because I get to see what has happened on Tuesday, which for some reason tends to be the highest downloads and the highest subscriber rate hits on Tuesday. So that gives me a better idea of how many subscribers I have. So I have to wait until Wednesday to see what's happening on Tuesday because FeedBurner is delayed. Not with the new FeedBurner. The new FeedBurner is real time. I can see what is happening right now with my feeds. It's pretty cool. Now, I've just started looking through this. So this is only a very precursory perspective of initial reactions. You can get to this new feed burner by going to feedburner.google.com slash GFB. The only difference between that and your previous feed burner URL was your previous feed burner URL was feedburner.com dot google.com slash fb now it's feedburner.google.com slash g f b that stands for google feed burner so you can check that out and you can see it won't change anything about your feeds or your podcast or anything if you check it out but do check it out i really like the way it's improved it well for one thing i can instantly see an overview of all of my feeds. I don't have to click through each feed to get certain details. I see it all right away. It also lists right on the dashboard any certain messages that it has to share, such as when it can't connect to the website to pull the feed, it posts that in a little messages area and you can dismiss those or you can look at them for more details. This is much much nicer. The graphs too, when you actually click through into a podcast, it gives you more options. Again, it's very much designed to look and feel like Google Analytics. But for example, when I click on the new feeds tab and I click on a feed and then on the left side, I click on subscribers, it instantly shows me the distribution of how people are subscribing to my feed. I can instantly see by looking at this. I don't have to dig through all sorts of stuff or try and read, click through all sorts of things. I can instantly see here that the Audacity to Podcast has a higher concentration of Windows iTunes users than Mac iTunes users. The difference is Windows iTunes users, 40.3% of my subscribers. Mac iTunes users, 29.9% of my subscribers. And I can see statistics for other players like Miro. That's cool to see some Miro people in there. Hey, everybody. Or the Mac OS X reader or certain things that I'm not even sure what some of these are. A Google reader and some unknown things. I can click through this and it's nicely detailed and very understandable, very readable. And I can see how many subscribers use each service. Now, this doesn't really change the nature of FeedBurner, and that is how many times or how many different feeding clients checked the feed on that day. It doesn't really change that. So this isn't, this still isn't a reflection of how many total people you have listening to your episodes. It's just impossible to measure that unless you take well, it's it's almost impossible to completely measure how many people total because even though downloads count a lot, downloads don't tell you how many people are subscribed. Even the subscribers thing doesn't really tell you total how many people are getting your content, but it still gives you a very good idea and I can see how many people are subscribed to the Audacity to Podcast the ramen noodle, are you just watching, or the noodle mix all-inclusive feed. So this is awesome. Feeds.google.com slash GFB to check it out. If you can't remember that, you can check the show notes, and I'll have some screenshots in the show notes over at the audacity to podcast.com slash 18. That's this episode number, slash 18. Now, I also want to mention, share a voicemail with you, from Andrew McGivern, McGivern, and he called in to share something really cool that he's using that I have switched to for getting my 
podcast feeds into Facebook, both my Facebook pages and my Facebook profile. Listen to what Andrew has to say. It's split up into two messages, so I'll just play these back to back. Hey, Ramen Noodle. It's uh, Anna McGivern calling from uh, Vancouver, B.C., and I am calling, first of all, to say that I'm a big fan of the Audacity to podcast. And uh, when I listened to the first episode, I thought, oh, you know, yeah, it's okay. Since then, in the, in the last few episodes, I've been like, wow, top of my list, great show, uh, the reason I'm calling is because I recently discovered how to put a audio player on uh, your Facebook wall so that your podcast will play right on Facebook, which is something I've been trying to figure out for a while. But there's an application called RSS Graffiti that will pull in content from any RSS feed, and uh, you just put in your, your feed burner feed or, or whatever, and uh, it will... Uh, populate or generate a little RSS uh, or sorry, a little audio player right on your Facebook wall or, or a fan page wall. And it's awesome, totally awesome. And just thought that uh, the listeners of the Adapt the podcast might be interested in, in knowing how to do that. And uh, look forward to future episodes. Congratulations on getting married. Thank you. And uh, I will uh, keep in touch. Have a great one. Hey, it's Andrew McGivern calling again. I forgot to uh, point you to uh, an example of uh, how I did that on the RSS graffiti uh, application on Facebook. If, you, if you're in Facebook and you do a search for the Bunker Project, uh, it'll come up and you'll be able to see uh, what I mean. All of the uh, posts uh, include an audio player. Or if you go to my, home page, uh, my, my own Facebook page, my personal Facebook profile, you can see it there at, and at uh, uh, Facebook.com slash Andrew McGivern, and you can see that there's an actual audio player for every uh, podcast episode that I've put up there. I just recently did it, so I, I've got uh, you know all five of my Bunker Project podcast uh, episodes posted on there. And, uh, yeah, just so you can see an example of what I'm talking about. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Andrew McGivern. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. These are, this is an awesome replacement. I wasn't even looking for a replacement. I was previously using networked blogs in order to pull my RSS feed onto various Facebook pages and into my personal profile. Network blogs seem to be the best option that was available at the time when I started using it. I'd seen a couple other options, but none of them seemed popular enough or worked well enough or any of that. This, here's what's awesome about RSS Graffiti, is like he said, RSS Graffiti actually puts an audio player on your Facebook page or profile when it pulls your RSS feed. So as long as your RSS feed contains those enclosures, it's your standard podcast feed, that is, it will pull in each episode and display a player as well for that episode so people can click play inside of Facebook, not have to leave Facebook, not have to load a special application. As long as they have Flash, which most people visiting the Facebook website have Flash and most people on a computer have Flash installed. So they can just click play right there in Facebook and it will play the MP3 through your feed burner feed from your website and all of that. And that is awesome. I am a big fan of reaching your audience where they are, not all the time making them come to you, but going out there to them. That's why I search Twitter for things like audacity and try to help people when they have problems with audacity. So I'm trying to go out to people where they are. This is a way that you can reach out to people where they are on Facebook. Put your podcast in your Facebook profile. If you have pages or even groups, this even works with groups. The new groups, I think, by the way, are awesome. I like them for certain things. Only certain things. Otherwise, they could be very annoying for other things. 
But this application, it's RSS Graffiti. The way you can get to that is facebook.com slash RSS dot graffiti. Facebook.com slash RSS dot graffiti. And it's pretty easy. You have to add it. You have to go to it, add it, authorize it a couple times and such. But it's super easy to enter your feed. And you just put your feed in, your RSS feed, and then the name of the show, and that's it. Once you've added, chosen your page to put it into or your profile and such and authorized it, you don't have to do all of this stuff and verify that you're the publisher. Like networked blogs was like that. It was complicated that you either had to put a widget on your site or you had to have 10 of your friends verify that you were the publisher or the author of this blog in order for network blogs to work with it and let you have control over how it displays. That was frustrating. This is very simple. This is this does what it's supposed to do and it does it very well. That's facebook.com slash rss dot graffiti. And to check out some examples of this, like Andrew said, he's using it on his personal profile and in his Facebook page. And on his Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash the bunker project. Or his personal page was facebook.com slash Andrew McGivern. That's M C G I V E R N. I believe that's how it's spelled. And the links to this will be in the show notes. So just click there. That's over at the audacity podcast.com slash 18. So Andrew, thank you very much for sharing that. I wasn't even looking for a solution. I just decided that network blogs was the best that it could get. Well, apparently not because now there's this RSS graffiti and it's been developed and matured really well. Excellent resource. I highly recommend that you use this even if all you're going to do is publish your podcast to your personal profile and you might get listeners in your personal network listening to your podcast and subscribing to your podcast that you wouldn't otherwise have. Now, if you're concerned about download statistics or any kind of statistics, this will not show up for all of your listeners as subscribers because they're not subscribed to your content. They're just seeing it. It's like visiting your website. They're just seeing it. They're not necessarily subscribed. But as long as you are giving it the the feed that you give everywhere else, like your feed burner feed, hopefully, as long as you're giving it that, it will pull the links from whatever source you tell it, whether that be Libsyn, your own personal hosting, and it will run it through whatever tracking service you already have set up. So as long as you're using any kind of tracking or stat service on your downloads, it will still track it for your Facebook downloads as well. So if you have an advertiser that's paying you based on the number of downloads, or you're just concerned about how many times an episode is downloaded, this still works. So if you have 100 friends and all of them click play to listen to your podcast, that will count as a download of some sort. So you don't have to worry about it messing up with your stats. And that is pretty cool. I really like that. Thank you, Andrew, for suggesting that. And check out his Facebook page, facebook.com slash The Bunker Project. It's a little page for podcasters as well. And beer is somehow thrown in the mix. So I'm not sure what kind of connection that has or how good of a combination that is, but apparently he thinks so. So check it out, facebook.com slash The Bunker Project. Also, I received an email from someone that I want to share with you the concept, what he shared with me, is he reminded me that when we're talking about Audacity, there's a great resource that I'd just not thought about, I'd forgotten about, and that is the Audacity Wikipedia, not Wikipedia, the Audacity Wiki. See, a wiki is like an online encyclopedia sort of thing, like Wikipedia, where people can add information and it's community edited and such. Well, there's a wiki for Audacity. It's wiki.audacityteam.org. And this, let's say this is the Audacity tip for today, is if you need help with Audacity or you're looking for some ways to improve on some things, and I haven't mentioned stuff, or you're just looking for some help and 
Want some tips? Check out wiki.audacityteam.org. Fantastic resource, a list of tutorials and resources, other resources about podcasting with Audacity, how to use Audacity to make CDs or Audacity from a microphone, CDs, tapes, all sorts of stuff. Great content there. Check it out. Wiki.audacityteam.org. And what Ron had mentioned that I am extremely grateful to Ron for, and he doesn't have a website or Twitter or anything like that for me to share with you. So I'm just going to have to say thanks, Ron, someday. When you've got something that I can link people to, I will. What he pointed out to me is that within this wiki, there's a page under useful links for tutorials. And what he suggested I do is list the Audacity podcast in that page of tutorials and also as a resource for people who are podcasting with Audacity. And i I had completely forgotten about this resource. So I put in a couple very specific links. I didn't spam it, but I put in some very specific links to Audacity focused episodes so that people who are looking for help with Audacity can go there and be linked to here and check out some of the content. And hopefully it's very helpful. So if you are coming from the Audacity wiki and you've clicked through to here, thank you very much for joining us and for listening and i hope you'll become a subscriber for everyone else check out wiki.audacityteam.org and see what kind of content is there and also perhaps you could add to the content if you add anything then certainly mention it here and uh, i'll link to it or i'll check it out and maybe do a little editing on it too or help you make it more accurate whatever and we can make audacity have a wonderful resource of documentation. A couple other things I want to share with you are that I am going to be working on some digital products soon. I want to produce some things for Audacity, specifically for Audacity, but some other resources for podcasters and people using Audacity. Some of the resources that I want to produce will be very audacity focused some will be podcasting focused some will be music focused with audacity but i want to create some resources that will be available for you and yes they will be for purchase that you'll be able to purchase these things and watch them over and over and the awesome thing is you can watch me do these things on either a windows or a mac i'll probably do it in a dual platform way so it will apply to everything And the way I'm going to record these things is with ScreenFlow, which is a great screen recording application for the Mac. If you want to buy it, by the way, I have an affiliate link. It's noodle.mx slash ScreenFlow. So watch for those announcements coming up soon. And I'll be doing some free stuff as well. I want to make some free training videos, some short little things like frequently asked questions and just illustrate them in a video and show people, well, this is how you do this and this is how you do this and that and all of that. Upload it to YouTube and the website and everything. So it will help a lot of people be able to see it. Also coming up, the annual podcast awards. This is hosted by me, not me view, raw voice who owns blueberry and blueberry. I love blueberry. They provide my media stats and also the PowerPress plugin for WordPress. They're hosting the sixth annual podcast awards. Nominations start on November 7th at podcastawards.com. Podcastawards.com. Now, two things I want to ask you to do. One, Submit your podcast. Try and get your podcast nominated in there too for multiple reasons. Some of them are, well, one, if you've got a huge audience, maybe you could win an award. There are cool prizes to be won there. Two, you should submit your podcast because of the exposure exposure you'll get. The top 10 podcasts will be voted on by visitors best in certain categories like technology or comedy or inspirational or science or all sorts of 
categories there that you can check out. Submit your podcast to the appropriate category and get it nominated there. And people vote on it every day. So yes, if you have more listeners, it's more likely that you're going to win because it's very based on how many votes you get. So more popular shows are naturally going to win. But it's exposure for your podcast to be listed there. When you get listed, it has direct links to your RSS feed and to your website address. So people can just click to see when they're looking through the top 10 list of such and such podcast style or topic, they'll see your podcast in there and they can either click to see the feed or they can click to see your site. Excellent exposure opportunity. The other thing is if you're doing really well as a podcaster, I guess there are three things you, I want to ask you to do. If you're doing really well as a podcaster, check out podcastawards.com and consider sponsoring it. They're not paying me or in, or in any way giving me anything for saying this, but do consider sponsoring it like with prizes or awards and such. And finally, yes, the Audacity podcast, the Ramen Noodle, and Are You Just Watching will all be listed, hopefully, on the podcast awards. And I need your help to do this. The nominations start open on November 7th. So here's what I want you to do. And I'll be tweeting about this and I'll mention it again in coming episodes. On November 7th, please nominate the Audacity to Podcast for the technology section. Please nominate or the how-to section. Either one or both. Please nominate the Ramen Noodle for comedy. It's my clean comedy podcast over at theramenoodle.com. Please nominate Are You Just Watching over at areyoujustwatching.com for the Christian or the religious or inspirational or film or whatever topic you think that would be best for. Please nominate my podcast and then vote for them and it will really help me out too. And it'd be awesome if we could win an award for one of these shows. And it wouldn't be my doing. It would be your doing, the faithful listeners. And one final thing I want to mention to you is there's a new kid on the block. Not like the old band from the 90s, but there's a new podcasting kid on the block. And I don't mean that there's someone new podcasting. There are new podcasters all the time. This is a seasoned podcaster whom I highly respect, James Kennison from Nobody's Listening Podcast, which now that podcast is over, but he has the NLcast.com network. He just launched a new podcast. It's called Podcast Starter. I love his tagline. It's, we were all noobs at one point or something like that. He's talking about how to start podcasting and probably following it from a very, very chronological order of how to start podcasting. Please check it out and let him know that I sent you over here, over there, that the ramen noodle sent you and that uh, it's awesome podcast. He's only got one episode out right now, but it's a good episode. He's talking about the six things you need as you get ready to podcast. Fantastic uh, podcast. It's great to have someone new podcasting about podcasting. So check it out. The address for it is podcaststarter.com. So I've mentioned a lot of website addresses, a lot of resources in this episode. Haven't focused too much on Audacity yet, other than check out the Audacity wiki, wiki.audacityteam.org as a resource. I do want to tell you that the Audacity podcast has been accepted into the Tech Podcast Network, and I'm really excited to have that in there. You can find more podcasts about technology at techpodcasts.com. And if you have a podcast about technology, maybe you could submit yours there too. So thank you very much for listening. I hope that you will come back. And if you've got questions or suggestions or answers, or let me open this to you. If you have an Audacity tip that you want to share, please send those to feedback at noodle.mx and you're more than welcome to send audio files with that wave or very not very uncom- not very compressed mp3s feedback at noodle.mx or call in to our listener voicemail line 859-353-4332 
You can also leave a comment on the show notes, which will be at the audacity to podcast dot com slash 18. And if you want to check out all of these links and everything, check them on the show notes, the audacity to podcast dot com slash 18. So you don't have to try and remember all of the links that I mentioned in here. Now, how do I make those really friendly links? How can I just say the audacity to podcast.com slash 18 when it really redirects you over to noodle.mx slash the dash audacity dash two dash podcast slash TAP018? I'll share that in a future episode. Oh, don't you love the teasers? <laughs> Please also remember to follow me on twitter.com slash the ramen noodle and if you're a new listener to the show say hi either on twitter or in email or on the comments thank you very much for coming to the show and subscribing there's a newsletter which i will soon take advantage of and start emailing some things not spamming not spamming emailing you can subscribe to the newsletter at feedback no at noodle.mx and you'll find the newsletter section down at the bottom or on the right side of the page. So now that I've given you some of the guts and I've taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. I'm your host, Daniel Lewis, also known as The Ramen Noodle. Thanks for listening.